again. So there's going to be a lot of Lucas. There have been a lot of Lucas players. I actually today. got knocked out by um, by Lucas uh, well, Jayslayer. Jayslayer on stream earlier, mm. of course. Yeah. We saw him. We saw Muffin, and now we're seeing our third different Lucas in okay. Shine. So starting off, Key has stage position. Quick gentleman from Key, and already 60% onto Shine. Yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of the ab absorption because the absorption can recover if he catches an explosion, and explosions are so much a snake's game plan. Right, the magnet this time will just shift that grenade out of the way. He had just done so much work to carefully position it, and Shine will be doing all he can to disrupt. This Zare train just taking him from center stage to the ledge four in a row. It has to be frame perfect to be true, but Shine gets it, and Lucas Mains have gotten a lot better at that recently as a whole. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. definitely an evolving meta for them. The problem is, is that it doesn't do a lot of damage, right? And what we're going to see a lot of in this match is that even though the percents are just about even here, it's favoring Snake. And the reason why is Snake is super heavy, and Lucas is definitely not super heavy. So one of these people is going to live a lot longer. You can see the back throw. Snake very heavy, so just about living, but he has to be careful, does not want to get too close without a grenade in hand. Another strong... Oh, caught him with the snipe with the side B. Yeah, the What's PK up? fire. He's been hitting these three for three so far, I believe, in this set, and the third one, Ariel, going to kill. Let's see. He's off stage. It's always so scary being off stage against a snake because Nikita is the best edge guarding tool in the game. See? That duel right there with the Psy Magnet versus the Nikita. Catches the roll with the back air, and all of a sudden he's back on stage. This time to the other side, the down smash will finally seal it out. Key. Only at, a, the only at 30 or so percent. He's still very well in this. Lands the sleeping bag, some nice aerials. He's already up. Yeah. He enjoying about a 25% lead with these Nairs and these quick aerial starters. It's time for some juggling. The up smash, that does kill. It has that invincibility to start, so the grenade trade wouldn't have been an issue and gets a kill on top of the platform very early against a heavy character. Man, now it's just the worst, right? That quick juggle, another 30%. Shine is starting to run away with this one. Back throw this time. He has to find a kill very early to get him on off stage with an Akita, perhaps. But this is Air Train once again, five in a row, and shows no signs of stopping. Every time I see that, I get horrible flashbacks to Smash Four days, right? Back when you could string so many aerials. Mm -hmm. But wow, he's already lapped him in percent. This is looking ugly for Key. Yeah, Shine knows this matchup. It's a character. It is the character. Has him on the side. Finally gets the kill. Right. As I was saying, it's the character he uses most often for a variety of different matchups. But excellent roll read with the up tilt. And 117%, so will have a bit of rage to make up, but cannot afford to go for some trades. The back throw almost sealing it out. Finds it back. The PK freeze, not quite going to do it. Only going to get rid of the cypher, but the forward air seals it up, up to the corner. No amount of DI could save key there. It was looking pretty close in the first stock, but after that, Shine took it, and he ran with it, and the back half of that game was just complete domination. I don't think we're going to see a switch out of Shine. No, of course not. Shine has been known to switch characters even after winning games. That is so true. So, you know, sometimes I should think before I talk. Perhaps. He could easily go someone else. Though, if he went Lucas again, that sure wouldn't be a bad idea. Perhaps not. Some, you know, some people are just theorized that Shine was doing the character switching after winning games in total preparation for Switch Fest. So now after that event has passed, we might not see as many character switches. And again, when it's Switch Fest, you better switch. I guess, I guess so. Okay, so we're going back Lucas versus Snake. This time too, um, down to, um, what's it called, Town and City. Yes. Uh, this is going to be a lot better stage choice for Snake, and it's not that Snake, ha Snake rather, has any bad stages, but the center platform, if it's, it's there. It's so important that he can control with his C4. Right. All right. 
a lot of side magnet in order to block out the explosions. He actually recovered about 10% there. Right, and that's what we were talking about. Gets him back off stage with the back door, though. Almost connecting with the PK fire, but another aerial. If that was anyone else, it would be dead, but Snake, he can come back from anywhere. It's rid of the Cypher, just has enough drift to make it back. He already at 129%. Up smash, not going to connect, punished with a dash attack. This isn't looking like a repeat of last game. This is looking worse than last game so far. Yeah, this is a, this is a nightmare instant replay for Key to start off game two. And that's an another benefit of Snake's recovery right there. He tried to catch him with the two frame, but it didn't work because Snake's Cypher can take so much of a hit. Yeah, and now that he has a grenade and C4 on that entire right-hand side of the stage, it's just his free real estate mm -hmm. seals out the kill that, earlier than Shine does. That that basically saved him, right? Because he managed to avoid that early that early kill from uh, Shine. Suddenly, he's the one with the stock lead. And two frames him with the F smash, though, and out of a jump into the grenade, doesn't two frame him the second time. Man, Key's just living forever and ever. He is. Key has, Shine has got to get this kill, and there he gets it. Finally, with the up tilt, Shine barely managing to secure a kill, even at 177%. That's it's only 77, but yeah. Well, no, 177%. Uh, oh, when, on Snake, yeah. When he died. So <laughs> that's barely good news when your up tilt is only slightly killing at that percent. Yeah, it's so far solidly in Key's advantage now as a result of that late kill. Doesn't have any grenades placed, but the gentleman jab gets him right back to the ledge. A oh, I almost thought we were going to see that Zare train again. Soft start up, but only two in a row backing out. See, what we're seeing a lot of is that Shine has been struggling to get kills off the side because Snake's recovery is so good. But right. Lucas, less so. And Shine is getting abused when he's on the side. And that's completely changing the dynamic of the game here. Fishing for the down tilts to begin something, but gets the, the job the again. Starting to look very ugly here. Has the grenade in hand, but barely out of vertical range. Oh, the he got him! Gets the spike off stage. Shine now has a window back into this game. Only at 74%, so Snake if he can Cypher is strong, but he's not strong enough to live through that. Yeah, if he can manage to avoid these trades, if he can manage to avoid such up smashes as that one, may have this way, may have the window back. But he's off stage again. He's got to he's got to take center stage and he's got to control. And you see, when he can actually stay on stage, he is racking up the damage. But again, he has to stay on stage. There, he's on the side again. Dash attack gets him back. Two grenades being thrown out. Two frames in with the down tilt. Has him on the side, but Shine makes it back. But he's still in very dangerous territory, and he gets it. No, he's still alive, false finish. Living to the corner of the Nikita, into the magnet, and now Shine inches away from dying if that mag if Did that you Nikita. See that? The, he hung with the magnet all the way down, but it doesn't matter. Too much damage at the end of the day. Yeah, falling bear from Key going to even this to 1-1. One, one. Okay, now I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a switch. It's Shine, you know, he won, a, he won a tournament in Taiwan, I believe going four different characters. So, you know, this is a man who is used to playing almost the entire roster. Dude mains the random button. He does. Let's see, stage selection here. What is he going to pick? He was hanging over Kalos, and he, they go, we're going to Kalos. Okay, so this time, it's a big stage. It has is. platforms on the sides, which allow interesting recovery options. And he's going Lucas again. Yes. That makes some sense, yeah. Especially because of the expanded recovery options from Kalos. Mm -hmm. And it was off stage where Shine was getting so badly abused by Key last game. And now so having more recovery options gives him more chances to get back on stage. And now we're going to see Key at first opportunity get grenades onto the side platforms or just below the side platforms, eliminating one of the two options entirely for Shine. So it has to be very careful and very aware of where the grenades are. He's using a lot of magnet, preventing Key from setting up zone. Needs the roll inward with an air though, but the grenade getting Key right back into the advantage state. 
this is a pretty interesting matchup, partially because they're both very range-heavy characters. They're both very zone-heavy characters, but they're very different examples of them. Be okay. Lucas has his aerials, he has his floating, whereas Snake has is very trap heavy and also lives forever. Okay. Two very different kind of projectile characters of zoners. Two different themes, but the same genre, you could say. And these back airs from Snake, the dash attack, getting him from one side of the stage to the other. One of the F tilt. You know, Key technically is losing as far as damage goes, but it's still Snake, so he's probably fine for another 20-30%. Yeah, Meanwhile, Shine is a death percent. But not anymore. The Magnet healing him right back, and even that Rapid Jab was a death percent. He's sort of just yo-yoing in and out at death percent. The falling back air from Key, though, right beside the platform, already has the lead. Yeah, suddenly Key has the lead again. Had the lead again. Commentator's curse making you eat your words there. The Nair will find him twice in a row, but the grenade getting right back. Yeah, thanks, Shine. <laughs> which is what he's saying, uh, which is what Ki is saying every time he gets hit by that uh, neutral air. Right. Air dodge is back, so Lucas... Who says Lucas players don't use their air dodge on stage? Apparently not, man. The damage is racking up. Shine is getting those combos. He's landing them. It's finally ma it makes some damage, right? But there's still that dynamic in play, right? Every time Shine lands a hit, it does 7 8%. Every time Key lands a hit, it's doing like 20%. And the only thing that's keeping the, dif the difference is those magnets that are absorbing damage. Yeah, of course, Shine is getting these hits at a higher frequency, especially the introductory ones, but wants to go for the PK freeze. Only gets rid of the cipher, but tried to hit him with the Wi-Fi. He set up, setting up a wall of explosions, managing to get Shine off the edge. But that's this is not down. See, it's back to avoid the up smash, and now has the Nikita in range of the magnet. Safely makes it back. See, and Shine was able to do that because of Kalos, right? He had that state, that platform at the side, and that gave him a safe place to retreat to briefly. Even the up throw won't kill. Kalos' high ceilings playing into Key's advantage here. Still, very... was a very even game every time. Every time. Seals it out with the back throw. And that is a re-grab, so has to be careful. The forward throw and to the Yeah, Nikito. Shine isn't death percent. Th this could easily go badly for him. Or he could land a combo. That's Never mind. the C4, though. And now Key evens it up to last stock. In game three, this is the decisive game, and it's a best of three. They're so, a, yeah, they're about even. It's the last stock. This will determine it, the set. This is do or die for both of them. Just to be so careful. The down throw. Read the roll, but spaced himself inches away. And even though fractional margin allowing Shine, perhaps saving him from 30 or 40 more percent. But even a small string using that C4 managed to put Shine at a much worse percentage. So it's looking all in Key's favor right now. Gets him with the up tilt, and now Shine is going to be tumbling towards the blast zone. Key, after such a shaky start to game one and a shaky end to game two, finally manages to get this right back to the position he wanted. Finally takes it 2-1 in a very close set. Mm -hmm. He should be advancing to winner's quarters now, correct? He, I believe.